بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين If we ask ourselves who is the perfect mother Now everybody has a certain ideas and characteristics to define who is the perfect mother in his opinion But what we want to discuss is the some of the guidelines that were mentioned or highlighted in the Holy Quran and by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regarding that. There is an outstanding woman throughout history mentioned by Allah Almighty in the Holy Quran. She is the only woman mentioned by name. Usually in the Holy Quran, Allah Almighty does not mention names, does not mention places, does not mention dates. He mentions the story to get the benefit of it, the wisdom of it, the idea. And the main reason is, had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the details, people would have taken that as an excuse not to benefit from the story. They would say, they were this good because they were so and so, because they were in that place, because... So that will give them an, an idea how to actually not benefit from the story, the exact opposite of the wisdom. And that is why usually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never mentions that. So that you can benefit from that, it can apply. There are some exceptions. Among them, this lady that we are talking about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned her by name. And the main reason is because this example is never going to be repeated throughout history at all. That is the lady Maryam. Peace be upon her, the mother of Jesus, peace be upon her. An outstanding example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala related many of the details of her life. And in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala related to us some aspect of her life before she was born, before she was conceived. Even. Starting with the grandfather of Jesus, peace be upon him. Now the, the idea of Maryam, peace be upon him, was summarized by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one single sentence. He said, and his mother, the mother of Jesus, peace be upon him, was a believer or a strongholder of truth. Truth. Because she had true belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what she was going through in her life, she was truthful in her speech and in her actions. So everything about her revolved around this single word. Now what she went through was extraordinary by all means. It was extremely difficult, especially for such a pious woman to go through. But yet she never questioned the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or she never had any doubt in the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the bliss from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what was going on. Now here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that he wanted her and her son to be a sign for all worlds, all people, not only to Muslims. She's an outstanding example of the perfect mother. And that is why here, usually he mentioned her in regard with her son. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with her first, not with Jesus, peace be upon him. She, we made her and her son as sign to all people. Now, Maryam peace be upon her and Jesus peace be upon him, they had this. She, as an example, she actually was a teacher of Zachariah peace be upon him by her manner. When he came and he realized that she had some of the fruits that were not existent during that time. It is said that the fruit of winter he is found with her in summer. The fruit of summer is found with her in winter. She was surprised and he was asking, where did you get this from? She answered with only one sentence. It is from Allah Almighty. Simple. Verily Allah Almighty provides whomsoever with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes. That is when Zakaria, peace be upon him, realized, okay, then Allah Almighty can give me. He never had any doubt in the belief in that. But he says, is it permissible to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of such a thing? Because he was extremely old at that time. His mother was barren, his wife was barren, and she was old as well. And he never had any child. 
But he realized this, he says, then I should increase my prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not linked with the physical things in this world. And that is when he started praying, that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with Yahya. Jesus, peace be upon him, learned a lot from his mother, from her belief system, from her morals and etiquettes. And that is why Jesus, peace be upon him, was an outstanding example among all the prophets and messengers, because of what he got from his mother. She was prepared long ago by Allah Almighty. And another example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relate to us of the mothers is different from that. It's not about the belief system, the moral system, the etiquette. It speaks about the emotional and psychological well-being. Here Allah Almighty mentions to us the story or the example of the mother of Moses, peace be upon him. When she had to give away the son and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains how she felt at that time, how she felt at that time and after that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and her heart became empty of everything except him. That is how a mother is. When the son is away, when the son is patient or sick or ill, when he's in difficulties, when he's in hardship, it overtakes every feeling. This is the priority in her life. That is how a mother is. So here, the mother of Moses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, she became, her heart became empty. Empty of everything except Musa alayhi salam. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returned him to her again, to get that benefit from her, the emotional one. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made Musa alayhi salam not take any milk or food from any other woman. So there was a special connection between Musa السلام, and between his mother. The examples of those outstanding perfect mothers, you might say, uh, can be highlighted in some of the points or as a pointers. The first one, a perfect woman, uh, mother is the mother who takes care of the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in regard to her children. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants her to do with them. Because this is her main priority and main duty in this life. And sadly, sometimes mothers do not appreciate that and do not understand it. We all know about the outstanding status of mothers in Islam. They come even before the fathers, before anyone else in this world. Why? Because of this. So she should appreciate this grave responsibilities. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the, 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 in the dua and in the goodness towards the parents, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this. And that is why the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa also said that a mother, the, the, the wife, the, the woman, is in charge of those in the family of her, uh, in the house of her husband. The woman is in charge of those who are in the house of her husband and the children, her children and she will be responsible about them. She will be questioned about them. This is a great responsibility. But among the responsibilities that she should do is she should educate them, take care of them, be a role model to them. This might be very easy to say, but in real life, this is extremely difficult. Children at their young age, they are attached to their mothers more than the father. Sons will be attached to the father later on. But they get most of their etiquettes, of their manners, from the mother, whether they like it or not. It comes automatically. They spend most of the time with her. She's the one who is attached with them all the time, especially when they are young. Now, when they start playing and when they are growing up, probably the father will take some part. Those are the good fathers. Some of them, they just neglect them throughout. <laughs> that is not their uh, duty. But the idea is the mother is usually the one who is the role model. That is why it is very important for a woman to be that. Among the, 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 the importance of this is to guide them to learn about etiquette and manners. This cannot be emphasized enough. Because especially nowadays, parents and mothers and the rest, usually they concentrate about knowledge, about gaining certificates, getting a position, getting a job, full stop as if this is the main goal in life. And they neglect what is even more important. The mother of Imam Malik, you know about Imam Malik? 
No Muslim on earth does not know about Imam Malik. His mother, she took him when he was young to the class of Rabi'a. Rabi'a, one of the outstanding scholars at the time. He's the, the, the main teacher of Imam Malik. She took him when he was young to learn from Rabi'a. But she advised him one very beautiful advice. She said to him, learn from the manners and etiquette of Rabi'a before you learn from his knowledge. SubhanAllah. Learn from the manners and etiquette of Rabi'a before you learn from his knowledge. That is the outstanding example. Another example is to try to figure out what he is good at and guide him towards it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed everyone in this world with some unique characteristics, something that he excels at. And it is the duty of the parents and the teachers and, the, and, and they themselves as well if they can to discover that and put it to good use. Now we have an outstanding example of a woman, a mother. She took her children to Medina. The father was dead already, they are already orphaned. She is in charge of them. Took them to the Medina, she noticed that one of them had a keen interest in hadith. She left him there, a young child. She left him there, went back all the way to Bukhara. That was the mother of Imam Bukhari to be the most outstanding scholar in hadith. But how difficult was it for this mother to take this decision? Unbelievable. It must have been extremely difficult for her. But she knew that this is the best for him and the best for her as well, what she will use with him in Bukhara. Child like the rest of the children, end of story. But now with the Imam al-Bukhari, she will continue to get the rewards, every single reward that Imam al-Bukhari got, she will get the same reward. Forever. She was the one guiding him there. Now in real life, sadly, every woman probably, or every father, they know that some of their children are very good at something. But maybe this is not what they want to put them there. They have other plans for them. How do you know? How do you know that this is even better for them in the real life? So if you came to realize that your children, or one of them, has an outstanding keen interest in something, you should actually, it is part of your duty, to guide him toward that. There will be some sacrifices for sure, but the results can be outstanding as well. We have many such examples of scholars whom their mother were the reason that they went to this path and they excelled at it. Another important element of the mother is to be compassionate, to fulfill the emotional needs of her children. This is something that is very important and something that is usually underestimated. We as human beings, we are body and soul. We're not body only. Sadly, most parents usually concentrate all their efforts in providing for their children the materialistic needs. Provide a place and clothing and food and teaching, education, etc. What about the emotional one? This is something very important. Because whatever type of goodness that he will take, what is our balance, whatever, uh, uh, good combination that he will get from the mother or from the family that will reflect on his relationship with his own family later on and with the whole society and that is why it was highlighted by the messenger وسلم, in one beautiful hadith this is a strange story that happened in front of Aisha عنها, the wife of the messenger she said a poor woman came to me asking for some food she was carrying her two little daughters so I gave her three pieces of date fruit. So she gave each one of them one. She took the third to eat it. But then the two daughters demanded that as well. So she cut it into two halves and gave each one of them a half and remained hungry. I was astonished by this act of compassion from her. So I said that to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Messenger وسلم, said, Allah Almighty has granted her paradise because of that. Or he said, Allah Almighty has protected her from hellfire because of that. Although it is a little gesture, but this will reflect on that child forever. 
and to reflect on the relationship of that child with everyone in the society. And that is why these elements of mercy and compassion and good treatment are of high importance in our life. And every mother should notice that. We can uh, finalize with one very important aspect in this regard, which is the Messenger وسلم, when he spoke about the woman, he praised a woman who benefit her family, her people. The Messenger وسلم, said, I mean, the benefit of that mother and the benefit of that woman should reflect first and foremost on the close family. Now in real life, sadly, we are seeing some examples that are distorted. Find the mother is extremely agitated, upset with the children most of the time, for example, and losing uh, temper. While when, when, when foreign people come or visitors or friends, the face completely changes. This is a different woman altogether, smiling and lenient. And when the children of those visitors do bad things like her own children, she can put up with it absolutely fine, no problem. Leave them, let them play, they are children, they can enjoy life. What about your own? Something is wrong here. In every type of goodness in your life, everything that Islam teaches you, it should reflect first and foremost on those around you, the closest. This is the most important in life. Getting agitated with somebody else, easier than getting agitated with your own. So the type of goodness that we are talking about should reflect, as the Messenger of said, said, reflect upon her own family and her own people. Those examples that we are mentioning are not only historical. We are still seeing examples till today. Alhamdulillah, the goodness is in this nation of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It will never end, forever. In one narration, the goodness is in my nation, forever, till the day of judgment. We are seeing outstanding examples of mothers, devoted mothers. Most of them, alhamdulillah, are devoted. We're not saying that uh, a mother should never get angry, never get upset, never, no. We are human beings, and this will for sure happen at some time, but it should not be the norm. And it is the duty of the husband or the, the rest of the family to support her during her time of weakness or difficulties. An outstanding example in real life nowadays are the mothers of the martyrs. Those who offer their own sons to defend truth and to defend the country, mashallah. Outstanding. We are seeing examples in our life. People are going there to give her some counseling and condolences, and she refuses to receive them. So if you come to congratulate me, you are most welcome. If you are coming here to cry, I don't want to receive you. Unbelievable. But what type of example she is providing to the rest of the society and to the rest of her children as well? Those are the outstanding examples that we are talking about. They still exist, alhamdulillah. It is our duty, everyone was. Because of all of this and many others, actually, that is why the status of a woman and a mother, especially in Islam, is extremely important and high. Because of all of this. In fact, it is one of the best actions and the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do in your life that goodness to mothers. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. He said, I do not know anything that will get, that is closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am not aware of anything that is closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that goodness than goodness to the mothers. I am not aware of anything that is closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than goodness to the mothers. So as we are talking about the perfect mother, we, are to, we should also speak about how to be a perfect children to those who are devoted and never forget about them whether they are alive or whether they are dead. And in fact, after their death, they need you more than when they were alive. In their life, they could take care of themselves, they could provide for themselves, pray for themselves and so on. But after their death, it is all over except one of the channels that continues is your own prayers and your own devotion and supplication for them. So you should pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to pray for your own uh, mothers and for your own parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them all mercy and goodness in this world and the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise their status and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide them with well-beings and goodness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them a lengthy life 
with health and with belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and security and with the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who died among them, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rest them in peace. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them with his mercy and compassion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all their sins and all their mistakes. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise them in grace. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the bless of being devoted to them and to grant us to pray for them and never forget their favors upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to remember them in our dua daily, every day, now and then. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to give charities on their behalf. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to remember them and pray for them as they took care of us when we were little. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a children that will do that to us. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين